First Kings chapter 20, we're going to proceed back in verse 13 for the context of what's going on now. We're back to Ahab. Syria has come and besieged Samaria. Uh, we learn about Ben-Hadad and picking up with a prophet showing up at Ahab. And behold, there came a prophet unto Ahab, king of Israel. He's a puppet king under Jezebel. And you would think that God sending a prophet to him would be bad news. Thus saith the Lord, Hast thou seen all this great multitude? Look at all the Syrians. And in verse 1, there are 32 kings with the king of Syria. So there's a mass of people out there. Behold, I, God, will deliver it into thy hand this day. Now that's remarkable. Here's a king whose wife is set up upon uh, Baal worship. He has come into Jeroboam's golden calves. And God says, listen, I'm going to give you guys victory. The entire nation has not gotten right to God. And yet God says there are 7,000 in Israel. Chapter 19, verse 18. They have not bowed the knees to Baal. And we got to realize what this country, America, is being blessed right now is because the few Christians who do believe the Bible, who do love the Lord, are doing what God is saying. That's what this nation is being protected by. Realize when the day that God calls his church home. Now, they don't need to worry about the dead, the dead in Christ. They've already, you know, absent from the body and present with the Lord. But those that are alive, that are serving and doing what they're supposed to be doing. Once they're called out. And the Holy Spirit goes with us. There's no more prayers for the nation. There's no more prayer for lost people. There's no more help of God. Matter of fact, God will send the devil, the Satan, the Antichrist, seven years of the unholy trinity. So Ahab, Ahab's probably being blessed because of Elijah, Elisha. And maybe these 7,000, and then don't forget the 100 that Obadiah has been protected. So there are people in Israel, though Israel north is wicked and vile with, with the golden calves and Baal worship, there are some still there. They're praying to God. They probably go down to Jerusalem the three times in a the year. They probably, you know, Lord God, like Daniel, we've sinned. We've done wrong. He says, I will deliver it into thy hand this day. So there is no break. We don't know what time this prophet showed up. We're going to get a time in a moment. It's morning. This day, today, that thou shalt know that I am the Lord. So God's doing this to Ahab. Say, Ahab, I want you to get right. I want you to do right. I want you to see that I am God, not Baal. Because the Syrians we're going to see, we're going to read on another light night, Lord willing. They've got all these gods. Your wife's God's prophets, the prophets of Baal. Elijah won the victory. Elijah said, hey, this is God, the one that answers by fire. He killed those prophets of Baal. God is working on Ahab to get right. And Ahab said, by whom? And he said, thus saith the Lord, even by the young men of the princes of the promises. And we looked at this the other night. These are the young men of men of authority, men of power, men of, hey, listen, my son's going to the army. You put him over here in this cushy spot. Don't you put him on the front lines. You put him behind this office. You give him authority. You send him to officer school. So these officers, these men that are talking about the young men of the princes, they wouldn't be fighters. They wouldn't be the elite. They probably wouldn't even see any battle. And yet these young men, Fresh, young, don't know nothing of the princes of the provinces. Those are the ones that are going to get the victory. Then he said, who shall order the battle? And these are great questions. And God answered said, thou, Ahab, you're going to be in charge. Then he numbered the young men of the princes of the provinces. And they were 232. Not a lot. We go to verse 1, it says, he gathered all the hosts together, and there were 30 and 2 kings of him. So there is much people in the, in the Syrian campaign. 232, and after them, he numbered all the people, even all the children of Israel. 
So we have this great beat census. Probably just military. 7,000. I don't think he's going to number the women and the children. And they went out at noon. So verse 13 and 14 is before noon. This day, God said. But Ben-Hadad, this is the Syrian leader, king, was drinking himself drunk. And verse 12. Move my mark here. And it came to pass when Ben Hadad heard the message, as he was drinking, as he was drinking, he and the kings in his pavilions. So it's still not okay. Here's another day Ben Hadad's drinking. It's the same day he's doing the same thing. He's drinking himself drunk in the pavilions. He and the kings, and the thirty and two kings that helped him. Verse one. So. Every king that's come to battle against Israel, they're all getting drunk. They're having a hoobah. They're celebrating before the victory. And uh, Ahab says in verse 11, Tell him, let him not gird it on his harness, boast himself as he had put it on. Ben-Hadad and the kings are sitting there. They're just getting drunk. They're partying. We won the victory. And Ahab says, listen, you haven't got on your horse yet. You haven't even put your armor on. You better shut up. And then the prophet shows up. Hey, Ahab, perfectly right. It's exactly what you should have said to him. In verse 17, And the young men of the princes and prophecies, run that back to the prophecy, verse 14, went out first. So look at Ahab. He is doing what God has told the prophet to do. Those young men, you guys go first. And he would be in the front, ordering. Listen, these military campaigns, these kings, we know by David, one time he didn't go out to battle, and we all know the story about David and Bathsheba. But all of them went out. It's not like today where, okay, you send your troops out and you stay home in the White House or the palace or where, the Kremlin or whatever. The kings were out there just as much as on the battlefield. So when he sends forth these men, God says, you're going to lead them right there from those young men. Ahab's there. That would mean he's put some faith in God and he's put some faith in the prophets, the prophet of God to be out there and doing what God has told him to do. God sent a prophet. Prophet said, those young men, who's going to lead them? You are. Okay, let's go. He got the young men, and he's there. That's faith. Because he's doing exactly what God told him to do. And the young men of the princes of the provinces went out first. And Ben-Hadad sent out. He gets mad. He's probably drunk. And they told him, saying, there are men come out of Samaria. <laughs> That's the last thing he wants to hear. He's drunk. The kings are drunk. They're drinking themselves drunk. Here comes the enemy, sir. <laughs> and he said, Ben Hadad, whether they, whether they be come out for peace, oh, please protect us. Oh, keep us safe. Oh, please, we'll come out there. We'll be your servants and all that. We just don't want to fight. Take them alive. Take them captive. Or whether they come out for war, which they are, Take them alive. Take them captive. Look at them. Don't fight. Just take them. Run them captive. We're great. We're wonderful. How mighty we are. That's where America stands right now. Pride. Boast. Ahab said. In verse 18, and he said, whether they come out for peace, they want peace. Whether Keep them alive. Whether they come out for war, keep them alive. Make them captive. So these young men, notice how I keep saying the young men, the young men, of the princes of the province came out of the city and the army which followed them. So there's still an army there. They're just behind these young men. And they slew everyone his man. And the Syrians fled. And Israel pursued them. And Ben-Hadad, the king of Syria, escaped on his horse with the horsemen. Now, the Bible said, and 
I don't want to say comical, but he said they were drinking themselves drunk. Ahab is, I mean, Ben Hadad is losing the battle. His troops have run away from 232 young men. Assyria, Syrians, and everybody that's helping Syria, Ben Hadad, they take off <laughs> at 100 and no, 232 young men. They take off. Ben Haydad has been drinking. He's drunk. He's getting drunk. He's getting on that horse. He's he's drinking while, uh, under intoxication. And we learned this aspect in Proverbs. Lord, just later, thirty or thirty-one. Proverbs thirty-one, verse four. It is not for kings, O Lemuel. It is not for kings to drink wine, nor princes strong drink. At least they drink and forget the law and pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted. Maybe Ben Haydad would have had a better battle if he wasn't drunk in all the kings. His mind is gone. His mind has been perverted by alcohol. And his troops are like, where's our leaders? They're back there drunk. I ain't going to battle. The troops are upset by the commanders, drunk. Verse 21, And the king of Israel, Ahab, went out and smote the horses and the chariots, and slew the Syrians with a great slaughter, just like God told them. And the prophet came to the king of Israel. I don't know if it's the same prophet, but the prophet came to the king of Israel again. And said unto him, Go strengthen thyself. You're tired. Go get some food. Go get some nourishment. Rest. And mark. That's an interesting word. Mark. And see what thou doest. You better watch what you're doing. You better watch yourself. You better behave, king. For at the return of the year, the king of Syria will come against thee. You better stay on God's side. You better stay in God's grace. You better stay in God's mercy. Because guess what? Before the end of the year, year falls, Syria is coming back. You may have whipped them. But they're coming back. God said it is. And we're going to stop right there at that prophet. And we'll come back. And read more about the next campaign of Syria. 